Star Wars Jedi Survivor is soon to be released and is shaping up to be one of the biggest Star Wars games we have had to date. I mean, the hype for this game is very real. And from early game previews, it seems Jedi Survivor is making some welcome improvements from its predecessor, Jedi Fallen Order. Hey everyone, it's Atano here, and today I wanted to discuss the leap into the next-gen era of Star Wars gaming that we are about to embark on with the upcoming release of Jedi Survivor. How we as gamers define next gen varies from person to person. For me, next gen is all about immersion and tearing down the barrier between us as the player and the video game itself. So to first know the parameters of how I classify immersion in a game, I want to do a brief rundown memory lane and talk about a couple of Star Wars video games that I have played and that I felt delivered in immersive experience and ultimately helped me determine what I'm hoping Jedi Survivor can deliver. Hit that subscribe button and consider joining our Discord if you want to see more Jedi Survivor content upon release. And without wasting any more time, let's jump right into the video. In 2008, we were gifted with Star Wars The Force Unleashed, a brand new canon Star Wars story set in between the events of Episodes 3 and 4. The game was linear in its level design and had you playing as Darth Vader's secret apprentice, Galen Merrick, aka Starkiller, who had a wide range of lightsaber and force abilities at his disposal. I first played the PSP version of this game since I didn't have a PS3 at the time, being that I was still pretty young, but I remember never wanting to put this game down. Starkiller's force powers felt so powerful and electrocuting a crowd of enemies was always so satisfying. The lightsaber swinging animations were also fast and fluid. I especially loved seeing the light trail left behind after swinging your lightsaber and the crackling spark particles flying around you. The game also featured some impressive physics for its time. The environment reacted to your force powers and so did enemies. It wasn't until a couple years later that I finally got to play this game on the PlayStation 3 and I fell in love with the game all over again. The game ran in a completely different engine and essentially felt like a remake of the PSP version, even though yes, they did come out at the same time, but I had no idea this version of the game even existed, so it simply felt like a brand new experience. The levels in the game were highly detailed and characters portrayed a lot more emotion in story cutscenes, something the PSP version lacked. Gameplay was just as great as it was in the PSP version since it still managed to capture that feeling of being an all-powerful Jedi. The PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions also featured the Havoc and Digital Molecular Matter physics which added a great layer of realism to the gameplay. Then in 2010, Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 was released. It was the highly anticipated sequel, although it failed to perform like the first game did with its mixed review scores. But I was still fairly young when this game came out, and to be honest, I didn't care too much about the reviews. I just knew the graphics were better and that was enough to make me want to play it. The game was built in the Ronin 2.0 engine, an upgrade over its predecessor, with more impressive lighting and character rendering. The game even featured Dismemberment, a feature sadly missing from the first game and future games like Jedi Fallen Order. The game's cinematics featured incredible scene lighting, character rendering, and facial animations. Going back to record footage for this video, I was still so impressed with them. I mean, I don't think a single cinematic looked bad in this game. This uptick in quality added an incredible level of realism and immersion for many players. The gameplay loop though was more of the same as it was in the first game, but it all just looked and felt a bit better. Lightsaber combat animations were greatly improved. I mean, just look at the way Starkiller swings his lightsabers here. It's just so smooth and flashy. There's so much fluidity from one swing to the next, and even the sound design of the lightsabers moving through the air felt so real and reminiscent of how they are in the prequel films. Sound design also saw an impressive increase in quality. Lightning crackles were crisp and sharp, force powers had depth and weight behind them, while voice acting felt reminiscent of big budget animated movies, with just how professional the lines were delivered by the characters. Sadly though, the game's lackluster storytelling and poor performance overshadowed many of its new enhancements and improvements from the first game. 
For the next decade, Star Wars saw a generous shift in the media it began producing. The Star Wars Battlefront series was brought back and reinvented for modern consoles in 2015. Online service games seemed to be the next big thing, seeing that Star Wars Battlefront 2 then released just two years later in 2017. And despite it having a rough launch with its microtransaction fiasco, I managed to play over 1000 hours of this game over the next couple years. So yes, it's safe to assume that I absolutely loved this game. I felt it was the closest I could get to being in an actual Star Wars movie. The game featured over 20 planets from the movies, from Naboo all the way to Agent Kloss. Being in the palace hangar on Naboo felt so nostalgic and seeing it rendered so faithfully to how it appears in The Phantom Menace was such a delight. But actually playing the game was always fun due to the variety of iconic Star Wars blasters to choose from and various infantry classes to play as. Each battle felt like a Star Wars movie moment brought to life. The sound design is epic and grand with blaster bolts flying around you while lightsaber battles and hero battles are cinematic and intense. It was the most immersive and realistic Star Wars game I had experienced to date, all thanks to its cinematic large scale battles and faithful rendering of iconic Star Wars locations. Then two years later we got a new single player experience with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I remember there was a lot riding on this game, it had a lot to prove in terms of gameplay and storytelling. I felt it was meant to reinvent what a single player Star Wars game could be, and I think it proved to do just that. As we already know, Fallen Order follows the story of Cal Kestis, a Padawan who survived the Jedi Purge. Cal is trying to survive while also stay off the radar of the newly formed Galactic Empire. The game features a Souls-like combat system and Metroid-style levels with backtracking and upgrades for Cal, which is very different from the more linear experiences we saw in the Force Unleashed games. Cal feels nowhere near as powerful as Starkiller did, but this does make sense in the story's context given that Cal had extremely limited training as a Padawan. The game's combat is tight and feels more realistic in some aspects, like in the way Cal swings his lightsaber and uses his force powers. I believe this is all in thanks to advances in motion capture technology, which will always add a touch of realism and positively impact a player's immersion in a game. Regardless, Fallen Order's combat feels very refined and sometimes proves to be quite difficult, requiring you to use more strategy than what was needed in the Force Unleashed games. But I think ultimately the story of Fallen Order was what made the game so incredible. Seeing Kyle's journey to becoming a Jedi showed many parallels in our own personal journeys that we experience here in real life. From the loss he goes through, to his failure, to ultimately finding redemption, companionship, and family in the end. The realistic yet refined combat, authentic sound design true to the Star Wars brand, and a believable emotional story with relatability is what makes Fallen Order an almost perfectly immersive Star Wars game for me. Now, I say almost perfect because it has some flaws that should not go without mention. Areas of the game's animation work and level design feel a bit outdated and unpolished. The lack of fast travel makes backtracking a chore sometimes, especially with the game's already complicated map UI design. The game's numerous hidden loading screens forcibly slow down the pace of the action, although understandably being that there were restrictions by current gaming hardware. And lastly, not forgetting to mention the very few character customization options we are given. But already its sequel, Jedi Survivor, seems to polish up these flaws. Character animations appear refined in Cal's movement and facial expressions. Lightsaber combat is vastly expanded with the new dual wielding, cross saber, and blaster stances. Game previews show off the flexibility of how we can use these stances in combat and also how Cal himself has grown as a fighter since we last saw him in Fallen Order. Even seeing the new animations for how Cal fights in the dual bladed stance is a treat and shows how the developers didn't want to just copy and paste from the previous game. Character customization has also been expanded with the ability to equip different cosmetic outfits and we can now even change Cal's hairstyle and beard, which I am personally very excited to play around with. But most importantly, Jedi Survivor adds fast travel, a welcome addition especially considering how much larger this game is expected to be. With a larger world also means new ways of traversing that world. Cal is now given a grappling hook and air dash, which is going to make traversing this world so much more fun and enjoyable. 
So with its flashy visuals, exceptional sound design, and quality of life improvements, I am hopeful that Jedi Survivor will deliver the next-gen Star Wars experience that I've been looking for. But I feel the ultimate factor that can determine this will lie in the game's story, an aspect where details are extremely limited right now. The hope is that it will follow in Fallen Order's footsteps by telling a strong narrative that invokes emotional growth and change for Cal and also his companions. This will provide the ultimate level of immersion I hope to discover within Jedi Survivor. Cal's journey is just beginning and I'm thrilled to see where Respawn decides to take it when Star Wars Jedi Survivor releases this month on April 28th. But that's enough talking for me today, I want to hear what next gen means to you. And are you hopeful that Jedi Survivor will deliver that next gen experience? Let's talk down in the comments and share some thoughts. If you made it here to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching and sticking around. I hope that you enjoyed the short trip through recent Star Wars gaming history. And if you'd like to see more Jedi Survivor content, definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos coming to the channel. And finally, as always, thank you for tuning in today. I'll see you all in the next one.